Hey guys, good evening and thanks for joining. So next couple of uh, classes, I'm going to discuss about uh, topic-wise entry questions. So from the starting to our overall different types of security domains, what are we discussed? So first we are going to discuss about networking concepts. Under the networking concepts, our first topic is OIS layers. In the voice layers, what are the different types of questions? Maybe we can expect uh, based on my experience and also based on the other students' feedback. So I got it a couple of questions regularly. They are asking about these questions. Those questions are, first and foremost, what is TCP three-way handshake? So this is one of the very, very regular popular entry question we can expect from the entry point of view. So this TCP three-way handshake, it will fall under the transport layer as per OIS layers. In between our client and server are peer-to-peer -peer devices or maybe our client and application or client and database or any other two devices. So First, client will initiate the connection as a synchronization request and server will respond back with sync plus acknowledgement. And finally, client will respond back, okay, acknowledgement as a feedback or summary. So that particular total overall process happening in between client and server or peer and peer devices, we can call it as TCP three-way handshake. Whenever you are explaining about this particular answer, better you can take one practical scenario or practical example. Maybe take example phone pay or Google pay or maybe Google or maybe, uh, okay, so you want to write any um, travel based application and so on. For example, maybe. So I want to know about so and so address in the X city in that scenario as a client. I will go and I will give the, so respect to company name and address where the location I want to find out in the Google Maps or maybe Google search engine. Now Google will respond back with the sync plus acknowledgement by doing all these analysis and it will provide about whatever address I'm looking for as a sync and acknowledgement. And finally, so as a client or as a peer device, as end user, I'm going to give thank you so much for the Google server. So this is the way how the total overall backend process will happen. So that is called TCP three-way handshake. So that is one of the regular questions we can expect in the similar way. So instead of asking the OIS layers, respect to interviewer, you can expect the interview question in the different way as a practical scenario based. What is the practical scenario based? You are an end user and you are accessing one of the website name is called as facebook.com in the web browser. So what is the backend process? So most of the cases, instead of the facebook.com, you can change into some other website also. That may be google.com. Most of the cases we can expect. I give an example as facebook.com. Take maybe any other website also. Most of the cases as per the experience, google.com they will give. So google.com or youtube.com, any other third party website. So you are trying to access what is the backend process. So this answer you have to explain in the form of it will follow OSL layer approach. So each and every layer, what is the data format and how the okay, so overall application can be converted into bytes and finally endoser is able to understand about whatever request is provided to 
any other website or application site. As an end user, if I want to access facebook.com in the web browser, so facebook.com, it is the application as per OSI. So that application can be converted into presentation layer in the form of data. That presentation of the data can be converted into session in the session layer in the form of the data. That session can be converted into segments or datagrams in the transport layer. That session can be converted into IP packets in the network or internet layer. That IP packet can be converted into frames as a data format in the data link layer. That frame can be converted into 0 or 1 or raw bits in the physical layer in such a way end user computer can understand about whatever website end user is able to access as a facebook.com that is what you have to provide basically this answer we can explain in the total three ways one is through voice layer approach second through dns resolution tcp ip rules third one is ssl tls handshake So, but most of the cases they are expecting via answer through voice layer approach only. Otherwise, if you know about these three solutions, you can provide these three solutions also. But 90% of the cases, so they are expecting the answer via voice layer approach. Instead of the asking the question in the form of the directly explain about voice layers, they need practical scenario oriented question. What is the practical scenario oriented question here? So all the voice layer seven layers approach, whether you are aware of the each and every layer functionality or not. So that is the basically question here. That means most of the cable I have seen, they are giving the generic answer. As an end user, if I'm able to access google.com, google.com can be web browser, its application then I'm able to access the application through HTTP request. That is a blunder mistake. It's a layman terminology. At least you are able to respond back with DNS resolution. Internet will be happy. At least you are able to respond back with SSL TLS handshake or negotiation through symmetric and asymmetric cryptography. Internet will be happy. So you are saying like, okay, I will open the web browser. I'll go google.com. Then google.com HTTP request, HTTP response will come back. Then I can access the website. Is it any, anywhere technical terminology people are using? Not at all. So don't say this layman terminology to understand about how the backend process will be. Try to apply whatever concepts we discussed in the practical scenario based. So this answer we can give even in the these three solutions also. But as per overall, okay, so I mean, uh, overall the different people feedback is a voice layer approach. But otherwise you can give total three answers. When the end user is able to give the facebook.com in the web browser, this particular backend process, it will follow total three ways. First one is voice layer approach. Second one is DNS resolution. Third one is SLTLS handshake. One second, you can elaborate each and voice layer approach wise how it will work, DNS resolution wise side how it will work, or SLTLS handshake side how it will work. Otherwise, okay, in simple, just forget about remaining DNS resolution or SLTLS handshake. Just explain about only voice layer approach. That's fine. Third question. So here, sync. Sync plus acknowledgement and acknowledgement. I'm giving in the simple answers, but this will not work out. You have to frame the sentences. Take practical example, take practical scenario. Next one, explain about OIS layers. Straight away they will ask. OIS layers can be used for the communication purpose in between P2P devices. Example, end user to application. 
So there are seven OIS layers. I will explain from ascending order, from top to bottom. Layer number seven, application. Layer number six, presentation. Layer number five, session. Layer number four, transport. Layer number three, network. Layer number two, data link. Layer number one, physical. Shall I explain in-depth analysis? Can you please allow me? Then you can ask back the interviewer. If they need in-depth analysis once again, then you can explain about in-depth analysis also. Why? Because time constraints. Only you are explaining this question itself five minutes. Then maybe whatever questions they are written in the Excel sheet, you are not able to compete or complete. Okay. So that is explain about OSL directly straight forward. Next one. What is the difference between encryption and hashing? It's almost very, 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 very most of the interviews we can expect. What is the difference between encryption and hashing? So the process of the converting the plain text data into encrypted data using some of the algorithm and also using the password or key is called as encryption. So encryption opposite is decryption. Mathematically, it is a two-way function. Reverse is also possible. And hashing is nothing but digital representation of the file. That file in the form of the characters and numbers that is called a hashing hashing is one way function reverse is not possible in simple words they are not expecting not even definition also but i am giving the definition also encryption is two way function mathematically and hashing is one way function and reverse is not possible so that is the main difference between encryption and hashing simple okay Next one, explain about TCP versus UDP or explain differences between TCP and UDP. So TCP full form is transmission control protocol. UDP full form is user datagram protocol. Trans TCP is a reliable protocol. But UDP is a non-reliable protocol. TCP has a three-way handshake, but UDP doesn't have okay three-way handshake. TCP will provide the acknowledgement, and UDP will not provide the acknowledgement. TCP is slower, but UDP is faster. TCP has a feedback, but UDP has doesn't have the feedback. TCP data format is segments, and UDP data from is datagrams. Okay, and finally, example of the TCP connections are each and every website you are accessing. It will follow transport layer. Online streaming, online videos, online movies, in the real-time monitoring site, any Skype or video or Facebook audio call, all these fall under the UDP. So that is the main difference between TCP and UDP. Okay, next one. Router will fall under which layer? Network layer. Yeah. So layer number three, it is a network layer. Okay, switch will fall under which layer? Layer number two, it's a data link layer. Data link layer. Okay, next one. What is the difference between switch and router? Sorry, router and uh, switch or switch and router, both are same. So switch is an intelligent device. Router also is an intelligent device. Switch will fall under the layer number two that is called as a data link layer. And the router will fall under the layer number three that is called as a network layer or internet layer. Switch will use data format as a frames. Router it will use okay data format as IP packet. Switch it will use 
Okay, so MAC address as a physical address and router, it will use numerical number of the address is called as logical address. Switch, it will support virtual LAN concept. Router will not support virtual LAN concept. If you want to connect two buildings, two sites, two cities, two, two countries, two continents, two states, router is a mandatory device, but switch will not support this one. Router will support internet. Switch will not support internet. Router will support virtual private network as a VPN. Switch will not support VPN. Router will fall under layer number two. Switch will fall under layer number three. Okay, so this is what we have to explain about. What is the difference between router and switch? As I said, in the voice layer itself, we can go and we can make 1000 plus inter equations. Which layer it has? Okay, so two sub layers. Data link layer. Those Data two layers link. are media access logical. control, logical link control. Data format in the each and every layer. Each and every layer attacks. Each and every layer protocols. All those will fall under the voice layers. That means you are thorough in the each and every layer. Then you know about each and every layer definition. Each and every layer, the attack names, each and every layer protocols, each and every layer data formats, then only you can give the proper answer. But as per once again, if I want to filter in this one, once again, TCP three way handshake, regular inter equation. Second one is regular inter equation. And finally, explain about voice layers and difference between. Encryption hashing, difference between TCP and UDP. These five questions we can expect regularly. Out of all these five, once again, if I want to filter, so second one and also third one, not, not, not third one, fourth one. Second and fourth, these two are almost in all the interviews we can expect. Okay. So that is about first topic, whatever we discussed. If we're moving into second topic, TCP IP layers. In this one, maybe the, uh, one more thing. See this voice layers is also called a voice reference model. Both are same. Don't get confusion here. TCP IP layers, there are only four layers on the TCP IP. So layer number, I mean, so layer number four, so not layer, layer number four is application layer. Layer number three is the transport layer. Layer number two is uh, network or internet layer. And layer number one is physical layer, not physical, data network interface layer. So these are all the four layers will fall under TCP IP layers. In the practical scenario based, when we can use these TCP IP layers? What is TCP what is IP layers? Okay. Yeah. And how many TCP layers are there? One second. When we can use TCP IP layer analysis for troubleshooting purpose, debugging purpose, and also whenever any okay. outage oriented issues, implementation oriented issues, or firewall oriented issues, or SIM tool oriented issues, using the Wireshark packet capture analysis we can analyze the TCP IP layers. Okay, second question here I will give. Do you have experience on Wireshark? Yes. Yes, I do have experience on Wireshark. Whenever, if I want to analyze network outage related issues, application performance related issues, security related issues, server performance related issues, log onboarding related issues, or any other troubleshooting related issues, I can use Wireshark by doing the packet capture. Wireshark can be used the packet capture analysis in between source and destination. It will provide the TCP IP layer analysis in between source and destination in the application layer side. So whether what is the HTTP request, HTTP re response, what is the token we are using and what is the DNS resolution it's happening that can be used on the application layer side. Under the transport layer side, 
whether TCP three-way handshake is completing in between source and destination, or TCP two-way handshake is happening, or TCP five-way handshake is happening or not in the network or internet layer. So, is there any packet is retransmitted, packet is allowed, or packet is blocked, or packet is so? I mean, denied. Denied. That can be done by using the network or internet layer. In the network interface layer side, is there any media related issues like air, water, or magnet? In the similar way, so is there any physical cable connectivity issues? Can be done under the so the uh, network interface layer or network Ethernet layer. These analysis I can be done using the Wireshark packet capture analysis or network traffic analysis. This is one of the very, very important thing you have to remember. Why? Because when we are going to SIM tool investigation side, each and every entire question is, do you experience a log onboarding or not? Do you aware of the lag aboard or not? Okay, so did you integrate any times, any data source or log source SIM tool, to, uh, any data source or log source, log source SIM tool or not? That time you have to explain about both the conditions, with errors, without errors. We can see the logs in the SIM tool or we cannot see the logs in the SIM tool. Option one and option two as a probability two times, two times. So this one of the very favorite entire question. Same question, even we can expect under the, how can you integrate end user logs to SIM tool? How can you integrate Windows server logs to SIM tool? Using the collector agent method. We can integrate. Okay, so end user logs or server logs to SIM tool. Port number for these two scenarios, it varies from vendor to vendor, 443, 8443, or 9093. Today, enter a question. Do you experience on how to integrate onboarding the log source logs to SIM tool? So, do you have experience on Wireshark or not? These questions will come regularly, guys. How you are able to give the answer is completely depending on you. Today, enter the question once again. Whatever we discussed, Sophos EDR, Sophos XDR, ransomware attack, phishing email investigation attack. These two attacks only, they took for 45 minutes. For as a L2 vacancy, after roles and responsibilities. From past one month, I am not doing the YouTube videos. There are so many things are going on, but unfortunately, I am not making all those YouTube videos, what all the regular questions they are expecting. Every time it is repeating, you will get bored basically by seeing my videos. Every time, as I said, sorry to say this one, maybe I am right or maybe I am wrong. What are we discussed in the class? Out of 100% of the questions, 95% of the questions are coming as it is without any not even changing the naming convention also how you are able to express yourself how you are able to give the answer yourself how you are able to explain without with the dare and courage how you are able to understand the question is very very important first of all what they are asking about itself you are not able to understand how can you give the answer why people are not able to crack the interview because of this reason only People are not understand the question. People are anxiety, excitement, fear. First of all, they are not able to express their self. Then how the people can crack the interview? Whether I am mistake, whether it is mistake from my side or mistake from your side. Please try to analyze that one. Why you are not able to crack the interview from your side? First, improve yourself. Why I am saying all this? I know practical I am seeing for more than two years. One question logically, same as they are expecting. When they will ask class question, can't you able to give the answer back? First, you are able to understand the question. Nobody will expect out of 10 out of 10. So you have to give the answer. 10 out of 6 you can give, guys. You can crack the 100%. You will crack the interview. Nobody perfect in this world. 
Okay, next one. So on the TCP IP layer side, what is the difference between TCP IP versus OSI layers? You have to give the difference between these two. Okay. So I am giving one more. How can you do TCP dump analysis using Wireshark? So these are all the questions from the Wireshark side and also TCP player side. Not even nobody expecting nowadays class of the IP address also. What is private IP address range versus public IP address range also? Straight away they are going to the or practical scenario based questions related to roles and responsibilities. What is TCP packet? What is IP packet? These questions become like a legacy or world. Nobody is expecting that one also. Next one, classes of IP address. What are all the private IP address range? What are the classes of the private private IP address range? So, what are the classification of the IP address? Sir, TCP dump, it is a part of NOC team or analyst also. Basically, in the server logs integration or end users logs integration, we cannot do the packet capture in between the source and destination. So, in the server side, we cannot say wire, I mean, packet capture. In the server side, we can say TCP dump. TCP dump space hyphen D you are giving in the server side, then they will give the debugging file to us. Which team they will give to us? Server team they will give to us. Yeah. Then after taking that file, we can import on the same Wireshark and do the analysis. Because server is a not networking device. So server side, we can say TCP dump. Uh, will you find all the details similar to the uh, same as it, there is no difference at all same as it is whatever we are downloading the pk file from the network devices in the firewall same as the tcp dump also it looks like almost 99 percent now next one what are the classification of the ip addresses you have to explain class A, class B, class D, and class C. Here, private IP 10 series or 172.16 series or 192.168 series. Now, how can you classify the instant as a internal attack or external attack or insider threat versus external attack? People are working at more than five years. People are working at more than two years. People are working more than one year also. Then they are asking me, what is meant by insider threat? Insider threat is equivalent to internal attack. When the employees are trying to do the abnormal activity, that particular attack will come as a notification to us. Maybe through copying of the files through pen drive. Or sending maybe emails to personal to professional and professional to personal. First problem here is, 50% people have the English communication skills. They don't know about synonyms, what they are using. They don't know about technical synonyms versus the our day-to-day -day synonyms. They don't understand about these term, these things. How they will remember about what is meant by this one? Okay. So, next one. Yeah, so based on the classification of the IP wise, we can say whether it is a internal attack or inside a threat or else external attack. Okay, next one. I think these are all the two questions only we can expect. Yeah, I will keep what is inside a threat also. Will if you ask any question regarding blue address? 
no very very rare cases uh priyanka priyanka sorry priyanka so nowadays we are not expecting that question also it became like a legacy or world okay yeah previously we used to get that one even class of the ip address also now nobody is expecting that question from the interview point of view yeah any uh, any question regarding the subnets no need no no very very rare cases maybe you are attending 100 interview 100 interviews maybe one interview maybe you can expect okay. that to network side combination of the security okay yeah next one is ports and protocols today entire questions i will ask now you can give the answer total seven questions they asked today interview question whatever i am saying you are following that one that one more than sufficient to crack the interview today interview question whatever they asked a last back then you can give the answer port number of the head port number 80 http port number of ntp 123 port number of pop 110 port number of okay so ldap t89 389 port number of http 443 port number of rtp 8080 3389 double 389 okay port number of https 443 443 these question they asked uh, last one port number of 445 is belongs to ssh smb 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 tp smb tp smb tp smb smb ha oh, sorry smb smb are you feeling is it difficult one no now you will say the answer but at the time of the interview you will not give the answer i know that now you will give the answer because you are comfortable with me as a friend but one of the unknown person will come to you in front of me in front of you you will become like a blank black is mind i mean your mind is blocked you will get excitement anxiety i don't know why you will get the excitement anxiety and fear they will not come here and they will not kill you guys be there and courage that's what i said i have lot of friends are there part of the iit and also nit and also isb people and so on iim people i asked several time question what is the difference between you and me i have more than percentage of you you have only 60 percentage i have 80 percent in btech you don't have the risk you don't take risk in your life you will not take dare and courage in your life that's what they used to say they are doing the business i am here i am teaching sorry sorry <laughs> this is what this is what people so they even though they will to mistake yes i did mistake what's wrong with we are human beings will do mistake obviously that courage and dare you can show not in front of me you can show in front of your interviewer don't show attitude but give respect that is important okay so ports and protocols i don't say this one is very very important question you have to read whatever 25 to 30 we discussed okay read each and every port number and protocol there is no choice or option okay next one in the nmap tool site actually this one it's a open source as i said under the vulnerability management already we discussed by default okay so nmap tool will do port scanning for the targeted ip or targeted system or target host name okay so it will give the what are the ports are open and what are the ports are closed and also it will give the what are the ports are filtered out of all these what is mean by port scanning if you are going for vulnerability management interview they will expect what is port scanning anyone what is checking, mean by port scanning checking for uh, any open ports in a network only open ports what no, is mean by internet speech detail. what is internet speech what are you said just now checking out the open ports what do you mean in the indirect speech there any vulnerabilities finding the vulnerabilities 
finding out the vulnerability whether nmap will give the finding out the vulnerabilities but i mean no, no. i mean to say i mean it will give the details of what are the ports that are open closed i mean active <laughs> ports are mm, that's correct so you said like okay what are the ports are opened it will give the port scanning tool in their speeches what are the ports are closed also it will give if you know about what mm. are the ports are open indirectly we know about what are the ports are closed it will give even filter ports also our vulnerability mm. management tool by default it will give that particular option using enabling a couple of back end process what are those back end process in the vm HTTP now you said http to http direction not on the application side if you want to know mm -hmm. about in the target mission target host name target ip address what are the ports are open what are the ports are closed what is the back end mechanism for ss2 or qualis or rapid7 or tripwire everybody installed in ss2 everybody ran the scan everybody is identified the vulnerabilities now you are not telling about what are the what is the back end mechanism will have correlation engineer practice meaning here not to about okay running the scan and identifying the vulnerabilities understanding about the tool understand the logical thinking play with the tool understand about back end concept people mythology people thinking is okay mechanical work no need of innovation no need of what is right what is wrong we need only one thing mechanical work how it will work we are like a robots we are behaving here this one will come go to scan tool create scan take a basic template and create a okay so provide the scan tool name scan tool description target ip address for this scan tool scan tool uh, scan information for this cs benchmark provide the okay authenticator or unauthenticated how the back end mechanism it will work nobody knows nobody wants that one because we are like a robots now what is the difference you and me and robot you don't want that one sir we need 10 tools why you need 10 tools first you can learn about one tool properly first you can learn about one tool how it will work then you can apply all those back end concepts to same tool what is back end who will give the answer who will give the answer in case if you want to see what are the ports are open any windows system or linux system what is the back end mechanism which command we have to use in the command prompt next start then why you're not saying that one why you're not saying that one wmi method msrp net net stat msrpc linux net stat now you'll say this answer sir why because i given hint in the entire time who will give the hint so these methods we can use to identify what are the ports are opened in any nessus or qualis or rapid7 or any other tool also sorry if i am rude apologies please don't take a negative way i am rectifying your problems or rectifying your issues how you are thinking and what is the back end mechanism you are not able to correlate that is the problem here okay that is our port scanning part as i said port scanning by default whenever you are using the vulnerability management tool it will give that ports are opened and closed and filtered also not only about just opened okay so that is an nmap tool now i have one question here what are the different as port scanning scanning we can do this one we did not discuss vertical, in the class vertical and vertical and horizontal scans that is vm scans i am asked dedicated to port scanning enumeration techniques port scanning types we did not disc wanted i did not discuss this concept what are the different port scanning types i given uh, in the theoretical port. way okay full, full, full scan we have yes correct 025335 you have 65335 all ports it will scan no else you can give individual scan no full scan half scan you have xmas scan yes correct tcp half. full scan 
TCP hop scan, UDP pull scan, UDP hop scan, Christmas scan. At least, do you remember Christmas? Xmas scan. Yeah, Xmas. Not that is not Xmas. That is Christmas. Yeah, whatever you'll call it as Christmas yeah. scan. So these are all the scanning types from the port scanning side. Okay, you should remember that one also. That is about overall ports and protocols. As I said, ports and protocols. I cannot say this one compulsory inter equation. You should avoid do twenty five to thirty all the default ports. Whatever we discussed, and also functionality of the each and every port. Okay, next topic. DHCP. Under this one, we can expect port number of the DHCP. Okay. And also DHCP backend process. What is DHCP backend process? Dora. Dora process. Yeah. Dora process correct. So now, here one more thing here. We cannot. So far, I did not see. Never. Nobody will ask about what is the difference between static IP versus dynamic IP. So far. Okay. Next one. Uh, I think DHCP said only these two. That's all. Maybe you can expect one more question from here. Whenever any security incident is triggered, so in the alert, we can see the only IP address, but we don't know who is the user. In that scenario, what will you do? What is the answer? At for example, practical, I will ask. At five o'clock. Number twenty-eight. One of the ransomware got compromised by end-user system. That alert is triggered by a SIM tool or EDR tool. But when you are clicking on the respect to instant or alert, you are not able to see who is the user. In that in that particular scenario, what will you do? Is this is out of office hours? Basically, the attacker. Name would not be written. Okay, same time. Five PM is whether out of office of us. Five PM. Oh, uh, we have to check with the shift timings. Five PM, not our system. Any HR system, for example. Okay. So at five PM, ransomware got impacted by the one of the end user system. That alert is triggered by a SIM tool and also EDR tool, file integrity monitoring tool as well. But when you are clicked on the SIM tool alert. When you click on the EDR alert, when you click on the our file integrity monitoring alert, you can see only IP address and you can see only voice, but you are not sure about who is the user. What will you do? We just will do the investigation. There is two possibilities here. Uh, if it is static IP, you can find uh, find who was allocated with that. Static only for the servers. So we can't find out the. Yeah, user. that is what static IP. We will go to only servers. Mm -hmm. But if it is dynamic IP, we don't know who it has been assigned. That is what my question here. That is what my question. What will you do in that scenario? I'll go and check with the Active Directory logs. Then why did you didn't say that one in the previous one? You will speak with. You will go and you will verify the Active Directory logs, or otherwise, even though Active Directory logs you are not able to see, you will contact the Active Directory team. Apply, please. Theoretical versus practical. Don't lie. Active Directory. It is director of the service. It will provide all the users and company information. That's it. Why can't you apply all the practical to theoretical part now? That is that is part. That is the part missing basically from your guys. You got it right now. Yes. So in case you can okay, first I will verify the Active Directory logs at that particular event timestamp when the security incident is triggered to ransomware attack 5 p.m. IST. I can go and I can check the logs. But even though logs does not contain the user information, then I contact the Windows administrator team or Active Directory team. A sys administrator team or network administrator team, who here is a part of the Active Directory. Then I'll come to know who is connected at the time of the 5 p.m. IST. They connected via LAN or wireless LAN. We need to provide the IP, right? Obviously, you have to provide the IP to them. 
One second, hold on a minute. Okay. Is it clear or not? Yes, yes. Okay. Next one. DNS. Next one is DNS topic. So what is DNS? Anyone? Domain name. Domain naming system. If it convert IP address to. Uh -huh. IP address to, to sorry. Domain name to IP. Domain name to IP. 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 To MAC address. Domain name Mac to MAC address. Mac to no. IP, IP to domain. IP to MAC address. No, dom domain to IP. Naresh. Sorry, sorry, sir. But uh, that is not correct answer. Domain name into IP address. That's all? That's all. But I did not satisfy with your answer. Okay, then I think uh, you were asking the backend process related to what would happen. I need backend process request. only. Yeah. I need backend process okay. only. Uh, firstly, the request will send to the local cache or the DNS resolver. Why? No, no. Why, why you are saying the answer now? Why you did not say this one previously? That's what my question here. Ark, at least we have to say the definition. I don't. Basically. Whether Inter will give the hint to you, Priyanka, please be frank with me, honest with me. Whether Inter will give the hint to you? Because anything we start with actually uh, at least okay, uh, you can give that. that is, okay, maybe you can say in the scenario DNS process, I'll explain the two ways. Basic definition is it will convert domain name into IP address and vice versa. IP address into domain name. And we have another backend process also. What is that backend process here is when the user is requesting google.com, that particular request will go to DNS server. DNS server, it will validate whether the Request to domain is whitelisted or block listed. If it's a block listed, it will respond back to the end user. End user is not able to access. It's a white listed. It will check in the respect to cashier buffer or not. In case it is not existing as a new domain, then it will go to backend authoritative server. Authoritative server, once again, it will do the so whether it is a new domain or whitelisted or block listed. It's a block listed one. It will respond back to DNS server. DNS will put in the cache and also it will respond back to the end user. End user is not able to access. It's a whitelisted one. It will respond back to DNS server. DNS server, it will make a DNS record and it will respond back to the end user. End user is able to access. Why you are not able to say that one? But you asked only what is DNS. That is the reason. Ah, I, nobody will ask, okay, what is DNS backend process? We are, we are waiting for second question, sir. <laughs> no, that is what I'm saying. <laughs> They will ask simple what is DNS server, what exactly it will do. Maybe in my terminology, what is DNS backend process you are aware of. Maybe interview panel time, DNS backend process they are expecting and you are giving the basic definition. Then in that time, they will okay, satisfy your answer. No. Then we can make like assumption like a probability one is this is the answer. Probability two is this is the answer. Okay, next question. Which protocol or server will support both TCP and UDP? DNS server only. DNS. Yes. So answer is DNS. Regularly, we can expect this question also. So coming back here, on the DHCP server side, there is no attacks. Under the DNS side, we can expect one of the regular interior question, DNS pooping or Poison. DNS poisoning or DNS amplification attack. This one we can expect at the time of the interview. Okay. And I forgot one more very, very important question on the voice layers. That one is, what is ARP? What is the ARP? Address resolution protocol. Address resolution protocol. 
Did I ask about what is the full form? It will. Then you can it give the full answer. Uh, ARP full form is address reservation protocol. It will convert layer 3 MAC address to layer 2 MAC address. MAC address. Don't give partial answer. Okay, next one. That is about DNS side. So on the file server, I want to explain more into this one because this one, it will come the ransomware attack to the entire question. Sir, sir, I have a note which is called out. Yeah, please. Uh, if the blocker list, I mean, uh, any domain is a blocker list, it will check if it is, if it is a block list that is that is the reason uh, it is able to access that. The blocked list data also will store in the cache or not, sir? Backend database itself, it will store. There is no need of cache. DNS also has the backend database. You store in the database directly. Okay. If it is not uh, available in the cache, white list like white list. Even in the backend database, it will store. Okay. It will check. Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 Understood. Okay, this one mainly important point of view here, ransomware attack, don't get confusion part of the backup configuration file versus backup file. Backup is different, backup configuration file is different. Backup, okay, so backup configuration meaning here, regularly we can take the backup configuration incremental backup or differential backup daily midnight every individual system we can go and we can take the regular backup that is different backup data is different don't get confusion here and there backup data is different backup configuration is different when can we use backup configuration file when one particular firewall goes down in order to put back into no i i mean i want to say about end user system side forget about firewall concept here. The system, the when you reset the system or format exactly. the system Modernity. when you want to ready madely you have to do the formatting the system and freshly you want to do the new system configuration side we can take the backup configuration file backup data is nothing but here Regularly, we can do the backupping of the entire data. Ransomware, whenever it is got impacted, maybe either it is encrypting one file or group of the file, enter operating system. So that time, obviously, we have to take the backup data. We have to, okay, so do the regular backup. What are the example of the couple of regular backup related uh, data we can go and we can use it Couple of examples of the tools. Backupping, uh, you are saying about backupping of data? Yes. Can you give the couple Outside. of examples? Backup data, everything you are storing. Can you give the couple Achha, of examples? Cold, cold, cold and... Cold site, do you mean to say cold site, hot site? Ah, cold and hot and warm. Okay, that is sites wise. Okay, that's mm. okay. Not cold and hot, sir, not cold and warm, mainly for the hot site. We have same as it is whatever primary data center it contains in the disaster recovery site. All these end systems data also we can store it. But other than mm. this one, Why you are not saying about OneDrive? All of your files, it magnetic is not tapes. going and storing. Yes, magnetic, magnetic tapes. tapes. External hard disk. Cloud. Cloud, storage. cloud storage. And, yeah, OneDrive is nothing but cloud storage. Yeah. To the entire question. Interior asked about, explain about ransomware attack. And already your confidential files are got encrypted by the attacker. In that scenario, how can you recover those files? What is the answer you have to say? 
we have By ready made the backup. backup data story files are available example in my organization we are using one tray and also we are using nas san or nas or veeam it's one of the tool once again they asked in the interview in your system is a laptop or macbook laptop we said then don't you have the one drive access why do why do you want store in the veeam tool veeam is one of the backup tool anyone can give the answer you said the answer okay regularly we are taking the backup data in the okay so veeam backup tool okay now why are you using the third party veeam backup tool for this one we have to pay the licensing and additional cost don't you have the one drive from the direct microsoft yes then why are you using third party tool anyone logical question now this is what they expected day before yesterday one of the candidate explained about explain about ransomware attack how can you retain the data what the answer system i can say premium support or something like that whatever system it is got compromised to senior management and board of the directors because of the security and confidentiality related issues we are not storing in the one drive because one drive does not contain the so security related controls are that much great as compared to the dedicated on premise data center backup tool so all the senior management system and board of the directors like a ceo cto cfo director vice president assistant vice president all of our their data we are storing in the veeam backup in the on premise data center because those people contains the business oriented data it's very confidential it's a very privacy of the data other than senior management and board of the directors remaining all other employees of the data we are storing in the one drive and google drive will you get this spontaneous answer at the time of the interview this one no. this is what they'll ask back already you have one drive why you are using third party tool your mind will be black you have to say about think about every business prospect you where the confidential data is storing who's are critical in using the automation site even the developer also very confidential people maybe they are developing the code their code is storing in the one drive that one drive may be exposed to the public our all of the development of related code will be exposed to the public even our developer data also we are storing in the on premise veeam third party tool is the licensed one this one you have to get the with a spontaneous answer by thinking the critical versus non critical critical versus non critical employees in the organization side otherwise your answer will go wrong you will not say the proper answer so that means uh, you said it is hmm. like a ceo's machine hmm. but even though if you have a end user machine hmm. we can say that he is working on some uh, critical or uh, project so that is the reason why we are storing it yes maybe that system end system is got compromised but at the time of the inter i did not reveal is a ceo system mm -hmm. so that is the reason i said like with the spontaneous answer i thought okay this is the end mm -hmm. user system is belongs to ceo that one we are right. taking the regular backup as a veeam instead of the cloud storage mm -hmm. that means you okay. should be logically think dlp also in your minds as the regular backups okay if you don't apply these theoretical whatever practical i mean theoretical discussion whatever we discussed to practical they are asking back the questions obviously you cannot give the proper answers okay this is one of the very very favorite interview topic ransomware attack regularly we can expect this interview question under this one there are so many other execution that one we are going to discuss under the separate topic Okay that's all for up to 
DNS server we discussed. Next three to four days, I'm going to discuss about each and every topic wise inter equations. Okay, by the by, this particular story is completely filled up. So far, I, I mean, I taught more than 100 batches. No batch complete 15 GB out of 15 GB. <laughs> for, for your batch, it is reached to 15 GB also. Now I have to extend that GB per month wise. Ramesh, how many approximate uh, classes we discussed? Uh, my approximately means I mean upload chain and any girl 100 units, sir. More than 100. By the way, please go through the each and every subfolder also. Go to the each and every folder subfolder. NGFD means firewalls. Ticketing tool is empty. Sir, ticketing tool I'll update. Yeah. You can go through all these regularly. Whoever is attending, those people on is aware of what is meant by these folders. Otherwise, they will not, they are not sure about what we are discussing, why these many folders are created. And inter equations I can upload here. Videos. Okay. That's all for today. And tomorrow morning I'll take the class at 9:15 a.m. IST. Okay, guess then. So do you have any questions? Sir, is there any relation between a raw image and a backup configuration file, sir? Raw image and backup configuration file both are some that one hand handled by our corporate IT or help desk team. Okay, both are same. Yes. Yeah, when we are discussing about digital forensic investigation, you said like this. Yeah, we have to take E0, E1, E2 raw image and we have to scan that one through third party FTK or access data or oxygen forensics or in case forensics. Yes, yes. Any other? Please try to understand whatever concept we discussed. Tomorrow from DN from actor directory to till you can come till you can complete EDR. Then I'll ask the questions. Sir, in the a lot of details, we uh, I mean we are not finding any file path. How can you uh, what are the ways to find the file path if you are not getting in the a lot of details? File path is not a mandatory. File path is not a mandatory for every attack. If you have the hash value, that's fine. Either of the one file name, file size file category, file extension, or file path. If you know file name, go to global search option and then you can identify whether file is existing or not. If you know about file, it's not a mandatory. Compulsory file path is a mandatory. Okay, if, if you have the file name, we can search in the global. Okay. Yeah, exactly, global search, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, alternative? I mean, with the file name or... By the way, nowadays it's not a mandatory compulsory. We have to go and we have to log into the system, create a new system because of the EDR and XDR capability. Everything we can monitor via through EDR and XDR tool itself. Because already my tree attack framework, virustotal.com, and also google.com, everything is integrated. Lot of people are giving the answer. I will go to virustotal.com. Why you have to go to virustotal.com, guys? Already integrated EDR right. tools. That is long back 14, 14th batch I prepared 2020, I mean 2021. That one you are making a notes and you are every time I saying, I will go to virustotal.com. Why you want to go to virustotal.com? Already nowadays, EDR tool is integrated with all these frameworks. Directly you can click on that one. So we will come to know about the, what is the status of the reputation of the hash value. That is the main uh, functionality of the EDR and XDR. Yeah, please. I have uh, pinged you the 7.3.3 of... Uh, yeah, that IBM. is fine. Yeah, I have gone through that one. But when you are verifying into the our IBM Curator Community Edition site, even mm. we reach 7.4.4 also. Latest version oh. right now, it's 7.5. And at the time of the interview, you can say 7.4, we deployed in my organization site. That's what we are using in current. And so, uh, do we have any advancements when coming to 7.4 and 7.5? Because 7.5 uh, is not released yet to general availability. It is in beta status only. 
it's not released to public availability right now all the customers all over the worldwide they are using 7.4.43 or 4 7.4.3 i think we have both 7.4.3 or 7.4.4 advanced things we did not i mean they did not release yet what are the new feature it is going to come into ibm q radar i tried installing it but it's asking for the extra mb i have got the same error for 7.5 and also 7.3.3 yeah because that has same error because the one by one of the bug was existing that one unfortunately yeah once yeah. the penalty is acquired qrock that day onwards, mm -hmm. we are facing these issues. Did you find 7.3.3, uh, the version, oh, Priyanka? Yeah. Okay, but you can discuss, guys. And uh, I'm leaving for the uh, class. And uh, tomorrow, we can discuss at 9.15 a.m. IST. Sure. Thank okay, you. then. Have a nice evening. Can I make anyone as a host? Do you want to discuss? No, sir. No. Okay, then. Good night. Okay. Have a good day, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys.